Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Dominic Wong Weekend Show, where we have grassroots conversations about current affairs. Today, we will have Muhammad Azam bin Anan, curator at the National Museum, curator at the Department of Museums Malaysia, who will share with us his life as a curator and the challenges in waving a Malaysian narrative. It is our hope that both of us can share with you um, more about our National Museum during this lockdown. So without further ado, um, Muhammad Azam, could you introduce yourself? How did you become a curator? Okay, hi everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dominic for inviting me to this Dominic Week Wong Weekend Show. So I was, I'm quite excited uh, to be part of this uh, live show right now. So yes, uh, my name is Azam. I'm a curator at the National Museum, Malaysia. So uh, actually, I'm quite new with the National Museum because I joined the National Museum in September 2018. So this year should be my third year with the National Museum. So uh, I have a background uh, in history whereby I graduated uh, with the Bachelor of History and Civilization from the International Islamic University of Malaysia uh, in 2013. Then I also have a master's degree uh, in museum studies from the University of Leicester, uh, United Kingdom. So yeah, so basically that's uh, a little bit about my background uh, and, uh, and my current status in the National Museum. So how do I become a curator? Yeah, that's a really, really good question actually. <laughs> it was a really, yeah, it was a really long journey for me, I should say, because uh, I graduated from the International Islamic University of Malaysia from as a history graduate uh, in 2013. So at that time, uh, there, was no, there, is no, there was no vacancies for the curator position uh, in the Department of Museum, Malaysia or the National Museum. So after that, uh, I was working in different kinds of jobs from customer service uh, to in hospitals, so on. And then I was working at a uh, startup company as well, uh, e-commerce company, so on. And then from 2013, uh, and Malaysia Airlines. Uh, so there was a lot of many um, uh, jobs that I jumped from one job to another. Then from, uh, but in 2016, uh, I finally got a scholarship from the Commonwealth, College, uh, Commonwealth Scholarship Organization whereby I managed to, to continue my studies uh, in the Museum Studies Program in the UK uh, for one year. So okay. then, yeah, and then after I finished my studies uh, in the UK uh, from 2016 until 2017, uh, there is, suddenly there is an opening for the vacancies of the curator in the National Museum. So that one is actually on 2018, early 2018, I think they opened the vacancies. So, and uh, thank God at that time, I just finished my studies and I applied and quite loved and I loved my Reziki as well. Uh, I finally got the job whereby I started to work as a curator uh, in September, 2018. So between 2013, you, so you can imagine between from 2013 until 2018, there are no vacancies actually uh, for the position of the curator. So why, why, why is that the case? Yeah, uh, and do you plan why, to become a curator? Do you plan it? Yeah, actually I was, uh, that was, I would say that curator is my, my dream job lah, actually again, yeah, because um, Actually, you have to understand that the National Museum is under the, the, under the Department of Museum Malaysia. So we're basically a civil servant. So we are under okay. the government agency. So everything related with, to, uh, with the employment, you have to apply through the Public Service Commission or the SBA, like the one that I think everyone know, like at, when they apply for the PTD job, so on, right? So diplomatic uh, the, yeah, PTD, uh, diplomatic, uh, diplomatic, diplomatic service, right? So... So it it re, actually it depends on the vacancies of the department. Uh, so I mean, like uh, it depends on like as a, uh, like usually the uh, the department you, they will ask the the SPA or the or, or the public service divisions to open the vacancies. But then it depends on the budget as well and the okay. vacancies. So and then the and then the, the the necessities of the position as uh, actually also. So and then I think on maybe on two thousand eighteen. Uh, at that time, because there's a lot of people already like pensioned or retired in the department, so that finally there are vacancies that they can open for the public to apply. Yeah. How many curators do we have at the National Museum? 
So uh, you have to understand that the National Museum organization is actually a little bit small, I would say, because we only have like 28 people. So oh. because we are uh, so because we are under the department, so everything goes to the department of museum. So actually, the one uh, actually, if you look at the, the National Museum building, uh, that is our that is my office. Uh, mm. the, this, the, the one at the behind is the office of the department of museum. So oh. in the in, so in the National Museum, we only have four curators, uh, four curators, and then one director, and then one deputy director. So, but then within the whole department of museum Malaysia, I think we have almost hundred more than more than hundred curators as well because each 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 museums under the department of museum Malaysia and each uh, each unit under the department as well, we also have curator in that cool. position. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, is it fair to say we have twenty eight curators um, in the uh, national museum? In the national and museum, staff, have, all the staff in, included. That one, uh, in curators, we only have four. So, but then the rest of we have like we have the assistant curator and also we have the uh, museum assistant, and we also have like this other um, like what is what is it called? Uh, we also have like librarian as well. Oh no, librarian is one way working at the department. Also, some like we have got pembantu operasi or this kind of uh, other like administrative normal, roles. And, yeah, administrative role. Yeah, yeah, in the in, within the museum. Yeah. So twenty eight lah all together. Uh, no, to altogether twenty eight uh, staff within the staff. national museum. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what's the hierarchy then, like? So the hierarchy is like within the in the national museum we have the director, mm -hmm. and then we have the deputy director, and then we have four curators. Uh, four curators we uh, I would consider like a manager lah. Uh, so that one with the curators uh, we divide into units. We have the exhibition unit, and also we have the uh, education unit, and then we have the mm. research unit. And we have also like uh, the, the the development unit so on. So the, I'm the curator of research and documentation. So basically everything related to research, uh, like people if they want to come to do research at the National Museum, I will entertain them. Uh, and then let's say if we uh, conduct an exhibition, uh, so I'm the one who the one in charge for the research, uh, for the exhibition lah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Um. How does a museum work? Because you mentioned all the different roles already, and you also mentioned um, what are the jobs in the National Museum. So the next mm -hmm. question will also be, what is your work schedule like? How many hours mm -hmm. you work a day? And then what mm -hmm. else besides research? How do you entertain uh, visitors? They have a PhD thesis, they come to look for you. How do you assist them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, um, uh, I'm quite interested to talk more about the first about the, how the museum works. So, okay. In in a sense that in Malaysia uh, we have different types of museum. I think that I think not many people aware about this. Okay. So like the National Museum, like I said before, this is under the Department of Museum Malaysia. So the Department of Museum Malaysia is the federal agency, the okay. big one. So the big one in Malaysia. So uh, under the Department of Museum Malaysia, we have around twenty museums all over Malaysia. So national okay. museum is a part of that, and then if you go to the national museum, you 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 can find uh, there is a, a music gallery. Uh, that one is a part of the department museum, and then we have mm. the uh, Orang Asli Museum, and also we have the Malay Ethnology Museum. So there's a lot of museum within the Department of Museum Malaysia. Lah. So and then after that, um, like I said, uh, the federal anything related with uh, so we are anything related with federal is the we are civil servant. So right, uh, under federal agencies on. So anything related with the employment, you have go, you have to go through the uh, public service division. So you know, when if you want to apply for a job, you are you need to go to the SPA website and then apply okay. and everything. Uh, so uh, so it's really um quite tedious lah. I would say like if you want to apply. Five years job. Huh? Yeah, but, and then that one is the the first type of museum, the federal museum, uh, which is included with the national museum lah. And then the mm. second one is the state museum. So the state in museums are under the state government. So okay. if you, uh, so if you go to Selangor, uh, Selangor we have this called uh, Padat. Uh, we in Malay call Padana Adat Melayu Warisan in Selangor. So the one that muse uh, gallery in uh, in Shalam, that one is under the state government. And then like in Melaka, we also have Perzim, the uh, Perbadaan Museum Melaka. Uh, so all the museums within like in the A Famosa site right uh, the nearby, uh, they want all museums uh, under the state museum. So anything related uh, with the museum are uh, under directly under the state government. So if you want to apply for this 
um, jobs like curators or assistant curator or um, I mean museum assistant for yeah. that uh, for the state museum you have to go you have to go to the website of the state museum lah. Uh, so okay. not no uh, not through the uh, SPA like the one I mentioned before. How do you know which is a state and when which is a federal museum? Is it only uh, in Wilaya Persekutuan in federal territory, or is there a difference? Uh, there actually you uh, you just Google, you need to Google <laughs> like for example well. yeah because like the one I mentioned like uh, how many go, each how many federal museums do we have? Oh, federal museum like the one I said is we have like around twenty museums. All twenty museums, Malaysia. okay. Yeah, twenty. Okay. So, but then there's I mean not. Every state that we have the federal museum, like for example in uh, in Terengganu and Kelantan, we don't have uh, federal museums. So uh, most uh, all museums and uh, in the Kelantan and Terengganu are under the state museum. Same goes to the Sabah and Sarawak, uh, Sabah and Sarawak as well. So uh, yeah, so that one is the state museum, second type museum, and then the third one is the private museum. Yeah, so the private museum is like um, under the private entity lah and the private company. For so example, like the Islamic Arts Museum, Malaysia, in front of the uh, Masjid Negara, and then we also have like um, uh, Museum Bank Negara, uh, Bank Negara Museum Gallery. Uh, so this one that you have to apply directly if you want to become uh, the curator or staff in that museum, you have to apply. You have to go to the uh, website of the company and apply directly, lah. So they are not affiliated with the state museum and federal museum, but sometimes we work closely together, lah. Okay, mm. and then that one is the third type of museum, and then we have the fourth type of museum. We have Some the more. yeah, we have one more. Actually, there are a lot of museum. You know, I I don't I, before I joined the department of museum, I do not know about this. Once I joined, then I started like wow, actually we have a lot of museum. <laughs> like they are the okay. The fourth one is the university museum. So each university they have their own museum. So like okay. in University of Malaya, they have like the Museum Seni Asia or the uh, the Asian Art Museum. Uh, okay. And then uh, in USM also they have like Gallery Tunku Fauzia and also in UPSI they have this uh, Education Museum, National Education Museum. So in this one, uh, all the new university are under, under the administrative of the university uh, themselves. Uh. So like if you want to work with that, uh, with that museum, you have to apply through the through the university. Yeah, and then we also have uh, museums in other agencies. Like in the, we have the like, for example, we have the police museum. Police museum, ah, yeah. So that one is under the PDRM. So mm -hmm. like, ah, police museum, and then we have like the museum tentera, the army museum, and that one is also under the army, uh, the under army like the, the LDM and TUDM and so on. So actually, there are a lot of um, museums yeah. all over Malaysia. So yeah, yeah that's basically, I would just want to give, uh, uh -oh. On overview how the museum industry works, so everyone can understand that. So like okay, and after that, so the different roles, the job uh, that keep the uh, national museum running. So like the one that I should mentioned before that we, uh, you have to understand that museums, we cannot survive or we cannot establish without a collection. So basically, the main job of a museum is actually to preserve. Uh, the collection and also to display and exhibit the collection to everyone to the publics and this knowledge. So basically, actually, we uh, our jobs or uh, our or how would I say uh, the uh, types of um, jobs that we are currently doing. Uh, actually, we are referring to the ICOM uh, or International Council of Museum Organization. So whereby we have the collections uh, division and the conservation division, exhibition division, research and also dissemination of knowledge. Nah? So um, like I said, uh, within the National Museum, uh, I, we have these uh, four types, uh, I mean, uh, uh, unit, the one I mentioned, exhibition unit, and then research unit, and also we have the education unit, but we, the National Museum, uh, work closely with the department, whereby in, within the Department of Museum Malaysia, they have this uh, research division and conservation division, and also exhibition division, and also collection division, and uh, also education unit as well. So, uh, and when when we do programs or exhibition, it doesn't yes. mean like that everything goes to the national museum. So, okay. for example, like the exhibition that we conducted or doing. So, some of the exhibition uh, they are done by the division within the department. Some okay. are done by the, the national museum team. 
yeah so that's how we work lah so like usually like the one that uh, uh for example like the, in the last year we have this other uh, lost in the exhibition uh, that one the national museum team uh did not do it i mean uh, we are not a part of it but then there are a team within the department of museum malaysia which uh consists of curators from other department uh, from UNES as well they are the one who did and work uh, uh, for the exhibition so uh, yeah and then within the department of museum Malaysia, uh, the first the top management we have the director general uh, that took over okay. and then we have uh, two um, two deputy director general uh, we have uh, Encik Shawali, Mr Shawali, whereby is the one who in charge with the policy and then there's one mr razaimi as well the one who in charge of the uh museology so okay. the the national museum is under the umbrella of the department of museum Malaysia, okay. under of the department of under the museology division yeah. yeah so that's how the national museum works and the chain works lah. Mm. okay okay i think i hope everyone have got that. <laughs> if you have okay. any questions, please leave yeah. them in the comment box. <laughs> so later we will go back to your questions. But I think Azam has talked about many issues and yeah. uh, very clearly about how the structure works. Uh. So if yeah. anyone has any questions, uh, we will go back to that later. If any of you want to see Azam talk some more about the museum, please share it with your friends, put it on your feed. I, I am, I'm sure a lot of people in the Malaysian public will benefit from his knowledge that he's sharing today. Like, I just want to recap. La. So you said uh, we have 20 federal museums. We have 28 staff working in the National Museum. You told us the hierarchy, the Director General, Deputy Director General, and all the divisions. And the divisions are based on the ICOM definition. So mm -hmm. collection, research, conservation, exhibition, education, dissemination of knowledge. So all these are very interesting. So uh, you talk about your scope of work. You talk about your how the structure it works and what is the National Museum inside the entire government? What's the position? So I think... We covered most of what a curator does already, mm -hmm. but maybe how has pandemic COVID-19 affected your work? Do you still work uh, from home? How do you work from home at the National Museum? What's your work so, hours now? Okay, so basically, if not for the if not pandemic, uh, we we are we are the same like the civil servant, like other civil servant as well. We have like nine to six uh our nine to six jobs but then there uh this is i just want to give an overview how uh how i work in the national museum uh, if not COVID lah. so okay. and then uh, nine to six uh, but but there are sometimes also i need to weekend because uh the museums opens every day you know 365 except uh during the first and second day of raya <laughs> uh so and then there are there are once in a while uh, once in a month i need to work on the weekends because i work as well as a duty officer whereby i need to make sure that the administration of the museum runs smoothly whereby like for example because we have four uh, curators right so we will have this kind of alternate uh week whereby once in a uh, once in a month uh for that whole week i need to uh, i need to work every day so including uh, uh saturday and sunday so let's like, say when i work and during the saturday and sunday i also i need to uh, make sure the museum running smoothly make sure the ticket count opens information counter and so if there is an uh, inquiry from the visitors as well and not just uh i mean not just uh like the basic one but let's say there is something happen within the museum like there's an emergency or something like that so i also need because i'm a duty officer that i also need to entertain lah. so and then uh, the scope of work we are not fixed because we are uh, we are based on the project so like i said because we have like exhibitions or research that we are going so maybe there are some days in the office that uh, i will have lots of meetings from from morning until the evening and afternoon uh, there's a lot of uh, meetings that we are issues that we are currently discuss about uh, discuss work with my uh, boss and everything there's also some days that where i will work in a repository uh, in the store collection because i will have to uh, check the collection condition where but let's say uh, when uh, we are planning an exhibition so of course an exhibition you need to have a collection to display in the exhibition right so in order to get to under uh, in order to have this kind of collection of course i need to do research about that so i will need to go to the repository and check what types of collection that we want to display and so on so yeah there are some days there. also there are some days also because i'm a civil servant so i'm also bound to the civil servant uh, job so there are some days like uh during last time when when the parliament opened so i need to go to parliament as well so yeah parliament yeah because we i have okay. to 
Ah, because I help, I have, I have to help them because the Department of Museum, the National Museum, is under the umbrella or uh, administration of the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, right? Yes. So there are times that uh, staff from the from the MOTEC, uh, Ministry of Tourism, will call us, and then we need to go to the Parliament and uh, do some reporting about what is happening in the Parliament so on this Parliament session. So yeah, and also there are sometimes also that uh, I need to. Uh, do an events uh, because museum uh, museum guide actually we have lots of events before this like during on weekends uh, so that time uh, like for example like the signature program uh, bermalam museum night the museum uh, that one also need to plan and work together with other clicks as well so yeah that's basically how I work before this like in during uh, during uh, pre COVID. But now uh, everything's, uh, uh, especially during the MCO, uh, we have to work at home. So okay. most, uh, mostly uh, my job right now is mostly doing uh, research uh, on the collections that uh, I need to do and also planning on the exhibition that we are going to do in, in this year as well. So for example, okay. like uh, we are going to do, uh, because the, the next upcoming exhibition is the Medeka exhibition or the independence exhibition, right? So that one, I also need to plan uh, what kind of uh, storyline that I want to use uh, and so on. So other stuff as well. And then uh, we also have this, um, other than that, uh, we have like this previously, uh, the International Museum Day, uh, so where we celebrate May. So, and then, awesome. but then uh, the, uh, the celebration actually uh, in, the, in the national level, we will uh, celebrate on July from 12 okay. until uh, from 12 until 16 July, right? So, and then I'm also in charge of conducting the webinar. So we will go have the international webinar where we'll be um, invite uh, speakers from Singapore, Indonesia, and also Pakistan. So there is a lot of paperwork that I also need to do uh, during this uh, work from home time uh, period. Mm. Okay, so just to recap what you say, I think you mentioned you do research a lot at the repository, you mm -hmm. plan exhibitions, and also you do duty officer on the weekend. So that yeah. Um, yeah, handle administrative issues that happen on the weekend. You also mm -hmm. deal with uh, parliamentary affairs yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. under the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture. Is there mm -hmm. anything I'm missing out besides yeah. this four duty? Yeah, that, I think that's the basic one that I can guess. But I think there's a lot actually, but maybe <laughs> I forgot to yeah. mention. You yeah, also but, do there's maybe... the, but there's a whole, but the whole gist. Lah. I mean, I just don't want to say that. Gist. Curator yeah. is just not just, it's not just to do research, but actually we multitask with everything. You write uh, the stories work. and also I imagine like you have mm. a exhibit mm. and then you put a plot next to it and then you describe what yes. is this thing. So that's what curators do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, basically I, yeah, that's how like the process. La. Usually when you do an exhibition, of course you have to do the storyline and everything, do the text. You know, once the text uh, finished and then uh, of course uh, there will be uh, a assem assemble session, right? Where we, we will call the contractors and they will put all the panels inside the exhibition uh, room and then also there will be like session where we move out the uh, collections from the storage uh, store and then put in the exhibition room and then caption as well so there are a lot of many stages uh, that's the basic curator job if uh, i would say for the exhibition process but other than that to top up like the one that i, I mentioned before i also have other job as well um, as a civil servant government okay. okay so um what is the most challenging and meaningful part of being a museum curator because you mentioned arranging the furniture and also story <laughs> writing yes i think hmm i think the basic for me uh, to balance the work between the civil servant duties and also the curator duty because there are times that one whole day, I will need to do paperwork, administrative, administrative job because <laughs> I'm a, I'm also a manager actually. I would say not a really manager, like senior officer lah in the mm. museum, right? And also, I also have staff uh, uh, under my unit as well, so I need to delegate my work to them as well. So to balance that and also to do a research uh, for an exhibition or not so just exhibition or collection within the National Museum, I think that would be like the most challenging lah. Because some days you need to plan, okay, uh, for, for, for example, like the webinar that I mentioned, right? So within this week, I need to, uh, I need to make sure all the paperwork, uh, all the emails that I send, all the letters and everything, the speeches that I need sometimes uh, I need to do for my uh, KP and so on. So, and then at that time also, I also have this upcoming exhibition. So 
to balance that two types of job uh, would be like challenging for me. And then other than that, uh, to I would say for the public uh, to educate uh, people and make people like museum, I think that would be like the most challenging, uh, yes. <laughs> challenge, yes. challenging uh, part of my duty. Like uh, I won't, uh, I don't want to be criticized, but then like the most of the public, they like something uh, mystery about the museum, like all this kind of ghost story, something oh, like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, paranormal stuff, right? So when because last time, uh, based on my uh, knowledge or my based on my previous experience, mm. like uh, my senior told me that when the National Museum did, uh, I think a ghost exhibition, I think in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, in like two thousand eight, like there were so many people came to the museum. Like we don't have to promote, like we just, uh, I mean, like doing a one promotion that everyone knows, and then yeah. the queue was so long, you know. So. And then, but then when we want to try to like do an exhibition like um like for uh, like other exhibition like more i would say educational exhibition so it's really hard for them to come and to attract that yeah so i think that would be a challenge for uh, like especially like if you do like a historical narrative uh, exhibition i think that will be like a challenging part of the uh of the my job and as well as um and to also to make people understand and appreciate the history of the museum. So because uh, the National Museum is not just, we not just keep the old stuff inside the museum, but we also educate the people about the history, right? So, and then, so to make people to love history through our museum, I think that would be like a challenging part as well. But I think nowadays, most young people, uh, they are becoming aware with what's happening with the country and they are really, yeah keen and interesting uh, interested to know like before this you know um uh, during the pkp uh, pkp during the emco right uh, not emco this emco so uh, there is a lot of many uh, youngsters come to the museum uh, which i was i uh, wish i am surprised because during the pre covid there were no there are it's really hard to find them <laughs> in the museum as, except young the people, one that right? uh, young people except coming the one on who, their own interest yeah coming coming with their own is uh, quite hard but coming uh, but usually they will come uh, like uh, within with their university or the school like Lombongan school and so on right uh, so but then to come just they alone uh, to find them before this is really hard but now i mean it's it's getting many uh, these youngsters started to come and they start to find museum quite uh, entertaining place i would say maybe because there are, there are not many places to go i mean you cannot yeah. travel right before this right and you can and then yeah. when you go to the, like the shopping malls it's kind of boring it's getting boring so they you want to do yeah <laughs> and then and then if you, you go to visit and then they just not come like to, just to learn then something they also like to do yeah because our youngsters now really right they like to do instagram social media and so on so they like to post uh, so they kind of make the national museum um quite popular because of them lah. and then some of them even come for dating uh, they just uh dating with the, the national yeah. museum which i love like wow yeah. okay the entrance so that's fee how, is very affordable. <laughs> yeah, and also entrance fee. Yeah, very So go dating all the time. Very good. <laughs> yeah, only like two ringgit for the every week, every week. Yeah, for for the uh for the local people and five ringgit only for the international. And also, yeah, I think uh that's I would say like kind of my, the interesting part of my job and how do I handle uh I mean like how uh meaningful and the challenging part of my job as well. Yeah, yeah, I think I get a good idea. Just um, as a civil servant and a different role as a museum curator, balancing both roles, having an exhibition, a Medeka exhibition coming up so soon. I uh, hope everyone comes and patronize the Medeka exhibition and also the National Museum um, Festival that you guys will be hosting soon next month. Um, yeah, I also agree. I think that people, young people realize that the National Museum is very important. It is um, a place where all our stories as a country are stored mm -hmm. and they are shared. And it's the first place to go to to get to know a country. And I think mm -hmm. young people also go to different museums around the world. They also mm -hmm. come to the National Museum and want to see our National Museum, you know, become very modern, come with a lot mm -hmm. of artifacts and represent yeah. our country as a civilized, you know, modern country. So all this, this is the, this is the, the stress and the burden on museum curators, I think, you know, to yeah. represent. True. And then, I think you have to see that, uh, of course, uh, some like people like to criticize like the National Museum is quite boring, like something like that. But then 
to actually lots of tourists actually if you go like to trip advisor we have like a good rating actually for the national museum because yeah, yeah. uh because the national museum you, is quite you tell them right? uh, i mean like uh it's just just nice for you to uh to understand about the history of our nation like for example uh because we have like four narratives uh four galleries so by the first one is the uh, uh the prehistoric gallery so by okay. you will yeah where you will understand more about how uh the first civilization uh, I mean like during the paleolithic uh, mesolithic neolithic period so on all the archaeology uh, excavation right uh period so that's that how that's how you uh, understand uh, about the uh how the Malaysia established I mean like the, the first civilization and then then next we have this uh I mean sorry uh the Malay Kingdom gallery about the all the Malay kingdoms uh sultanates that happens in the uh in the in the in Malaysia and next we have the colonial era gallery whereby all the colonial period whereby we have been colonized by the Portuguese uh Dutch and also English uh English and also the Japanese and, and next thing is the gallery of the Malaysia today and how we achieve independence. So usually so four galleries, when, right? There are four galleries. So usually yeah. when the, when the tourists came, uh, they I we always get like a nice feedback from them because usually if you if you travel, you want to know the history of a nation right, of the country. Right? So for them to get to know uh, just within one uh, museum is just nice for them lah. Like for like for us, like I just want to get example like if you go to the overseas, if you go to Within to the UK, if you go to the British Museum, there is the, the the museum is just so big and it, it can be quite overwhelming to know the history about nation. Actually, if you the British Museum does not tell the history of their nation, it's just collections of the artifacts of the uh, civilization of the world. So and also to the like to the Louvre Museum. So I would say that like that's the beauty of the National Museum. The the, the I mean the uh the the collection that we show and the narrative that we show is just nice for everyone to understand about uh, the history of the nations yeah hmm. so you mentioned four different galleries for the national yes. museum mm -hmm. okay four different maybe galleries. we can talk about uh, okay so finally yeah uh, we covered all about the curator work now we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the national museum of malaysia itself mm -hmm. so maybe mm -hmm. we can start a little bit of the history as well okay so basically the national museum was open uh, on the 31st August uh, in 1963. So the idea of the establishment of the National Museum was uh, mooted by uh, our first Prime Minister, uh, okay. Tunku, uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman, Putra al Hajj. So because the National Museum actually uh, was on the site of the Selangor Museum. So during okay. the second, uh, so uh, during the Second World War, uh, the museum was uh, not damaged or a bit destroyed. Uh, mm. By the alliance, uh, by by the alliance party during that time, uh, because they mystically the allies, dropped the American uh, bombers. Yeah, because they mystically dropped the bomb to the museum, right? So, yeah. so it was quite uh, heavily destroyed, and so and and after we gained independence in 1957, then uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman sta started one to build a museum that uh, represent the national identity of uh, the uh, Malaysia lah. So and then he chooses this. Uh, if you see it in his photo, uh, yeah. can uh, you see the, the photo, roof? guys? Yeah, that's yeah. the National Museum. How it looks yeah. like. Maybe Azam can go through how it looks. The concept as well. Yeah, the concept. Uh, we want to show uh, the National Museum. Uh, the concept of the National Museum uh, is to represent uh, the royal palace. Uh, the royal the royal palace architecture. So if you see, like the roof is the Malay roof architecture. So okay. I mean. Even in Kuala Lumpur right now, I mean, I mean, I think National Museum like the only building that's left that have okay. this um a Malay uh, roof architecture. Of course, if you go to like the Royal Chulan Hotel KL, also they have the one. But then it's like the one I would say authentic because survive until uh, from 1963, right? So and yes. then um, took Abdul Rahman uh, moved the idea, and then uh, they started to uh, um built the National Museum and opened in 1963. And then if you see closely, actually, in the National Museum, we have this kind of uh, mosaic tiles at the, yes. at the building. Yeah. So actually, the mosaic tiles tells you the stories of the national, uh, of our, his, uh, our nation, uh, nation history 
from uh, from uh, Malacca and until we came to independence. So actually, all these styles of uh, we are imported from um, Italy and also okay. And then uh, even even if you if next time when the uh, museum open, if you go to the museum and if you go uh, inside the museum in the, in the uh, we have the Dewan Tengah or in, uh, the, the main lobby inside the National Museum. We have this, uh, all these tiles are imported from the Pakistan actually. So yes. that task actually just want to show the collaboration or cooperation between the Malaysian government and also Pakistan government. So, and then basically uh, before this, uh, the narrative that we use for the National Museum is much more on the, a bit history, a bit cultural, and also a bit a natural history museum. Yes, but then, yeah, but then after that, uh, we opened a national national history museum, a national history museum in Dataram Deka. So we, uh, that one, uh, we try to remain the national museum as more like more to cultural that kind of narrative lah. But then as time goes by, uh, that museum closed. I think maybe in two thousand eight or two thousand seven. I'm not uh, uh, sorry, I don't remember. So then suddenly we started to use the mainstream uh, historical narrative in the National Museum. Uh, yes. Before that, um, of course, we have this, um, uh, the National History, uh, the National History uh, narrative as well in the museum. But then we have this uh, National History Museum in Putrajaya. But then after that, <laughs> that, muse that museum also closed. So that's why um, it's really hard to to find and actually natural history uh, narrative in the museum. But actually, we have a lots of uh, natural history collection in, in in the storage. So, but I'm hoping that maybe next time when we have planned to um, to do like a renovation for the museum, we can put the natural history collection as well in the museum. Yes, so, mm -hmm. I think before two thousand eight, it was thematic, like you said. So different mm -hmm. things like natural history, culture. So what happened after two thousand eight was that you made it into a chronological order. Yes. Like you mentioned mm -hmm. just now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So prehistoric, early Malay kingdoms, yeah. um, colonial period, colonial and then period, the last yeah. one, Malaysia mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I, I also realized like, I read it up like you know a Muros was uh, I mean, it was a national effort, like you mentioned the first um Director of the museum was what Mubin yes. Shepherd, mm -hmm. and then you had the government of Pakistan giving Italian yeah. music like mm -hmm. house, and then there's also a local um Chinese industrialist yeah. Li Kong mm -hmm. Chen who donated mm -hmm. also Italian mosaic tiles, and then the mm -hmm. architect you said um Ho -ho -ho. architect who was it? Yeah, Mr. Ho, -ho, -ho. Ho, -ho, -ho. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it actually, yeah, it was uh, it was the president, and also I mean the way that the National Museum was established actually is a unity. Uh, uh, I mean a union. Be we are from all different races actually like everyone was quite excited to showcase like uh and uh, to showcase like the national heritage or national collection right so everyone like works together so yeah. i mean i i think if we live at that time i mean we can really see like the harmonious relationship between everyone i mean from different races and so on right so yeah that would that is something like i think most of people like do not see about the National Museum, but that was how the National Museum was established. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, question, how many um, collections and how many of them are displayed at the National Museum? Okay, so uh, the National Museum actually, because we have limited space, like really, really limited space, we only, we only display like 1,566 collections whereby actually like i said because the national museum is under the uh, under the administration under the administration of the department of museum Malaysia. so actually all together i think we have like the department of museum Malaysia have like almost 500,000 collections like almost half a million actually so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's quite sad like, because of the limited space that we cannot display all so like the one that right now you see uh, in the screen, I think I'm mostly, I think everyone can see right. It's yes. the replica of the Perak Man uh, from Leng, uh, at Lengong, from Lengong Archaeological Museum in Lengong Perak. So actually, uh, the original uh, bones or uh, skeletons of this Perak Man actually we display at the National Museum. But then I think maybe in 2000, I'm not sure where actually because at that time I still, I do not, I, I haven't joined the National Museum. So, and then they decided to just display at the original place of that, uh, in Lenggong. Lah. So, but then, but then this uh, Lenggong uh, Museum actually is currently under the administration of the, um, 
uh, the National Heritage Department, the Jabatan Warisan Negara. So yeah, so, but then uh, the, the the replica that we display is exactly the same, like mm. the one that we have in Langong. Yeah, so and then uh, yeah, the 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 pyramid is actually quite interesting. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, because it's the I think it's the first complete skeleton that we found in Malaysia. So basically. Uh, before this, uh, uh, the National Museum team, uh, they conduct uh, research and excavation within um, the, uh, within all over Malaysia. And then they, uh, they found this uh, completed skeleton, uh, which is quite rare actually. Uh, it's a, actually, it's a man, I think, uh, it's a, a man, a man of tribe. And then when they found uh, the, the, at the bureau site also, uh, they found there's a lot of this, um, uh, things uh, like uh, marbles and so on, uh, marbles, and there's a lot of uh, quite important things that have, uh, have happened to be buried together with the pyramid. So at that time, uh, they concluded that uh, this pyramid is someone that uh, really quite established or quite uh, noble within his tribe. So yeah. So and then also, I think they uh, the pyramid also have like this um, disability. Uh, Within his shoulder, uh, which, uh, within his shoulder, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember, <laughs> and then uh, and he's a bit, uh, I was, I, how, how do I say in English, a tempang, like, uh, like, yeah. So yeah, that's basically uh, the pair of men that and the eleven thousand years old, is it? Yeah, eleven, yeah, eleven thousand years old. Sorry, yeah, mm, during the Neolithic period time. Yeah. Neolithic period time. So that's how mm. long, uh, Malaysians yeah, existed. Yeah, that's in, how it's, uh, it's, it was really long. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's the most uh, challenging part, I think, to tell the public that actually we have quite diverse and rich history, actually way, go way, way back to this uh, Neolithic period, Paleolithic period. Right? And also we have like this uh, Dongson drum uh, that we found uh, in uh, Selangor and Kampus Sungai Lang. Uh, and then uh, interestingly, because this one is displayed in the prehistoric gallery. So, and then this Dongson drum actually, um, uh, comes from Vietnam. So there okay. is a part of Vietnam uh, called uh, Dong Son. So at that, you can see that from at that time, during that prehistoric period, there is also this uh, interrelationship between the Vietnam people coming to our uh, coming to our places. So like they bring this kind of Dong Son technology because at that time, they uh, they say that this Dong Son is quite something special or something quite, uh, I would say, special relic or sacred relic. So up to coming and then they maybe I think they have a trade something like that and come to like uh to our country lah uh, bring they bring this uh, Dong Son drum. Mm. Yep, yep. I read a article actually is from the Museum Volunteers website mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. under the National Museum. It says mm -hmm. that the Dong Son is a name given to a Bronze Age culture near Red Sa and Ma River Valley in North Vietnam around mm -hmm. 500 BC to 3rd century CE. I think this one is 110 uh, AD. Yeah, la, mm -hmm. yeah, 110. They were a regalia of power and they are given to local chieftains, uh, including Malaya, as a sign of friendship and to seal trade agreements. La. So mm -hmm. this one is a Hager type 1. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. And then um, I will go on to our next slide. Yeah, this one. Can you tell us more about this Avalokiteshvara? <laughs> So yeah, Avalokiteshvara is quite uh, something um, quite special because it's one of the uh, national heritage object that we gazetted in 2015, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. So it was um, a statue uh, found in a tin mine uh, belonging to Anglo Oriental Company in 1936. 1936. And also, yeah, in Bido, yeah, in Perak. So, and then, uh, it is made of bronze and has uh, and has eight of arms, uh, but however, which uh, one is broken? So, but then it was uh, dated sometime between uh, seven and twelve centuries, uh, where the culture region was a uh, Hindu Buddhist. So, um, I think this uh, statue actually uh, quite significant in the in the museum Naragar narrative as well, because usually people like uh, like to not not complain, but like tell us like. Most of the narrative that shown in the uh, in the uh, museum negara of in the museum negara is mostly like Islamic Malay uh, narrative, right? And so by 14th then, century, Malacca yeah, started it. Yeah, 
more focused on that. But then uh, with this uh, artifact or avalanche tattoo, actually, we want to showcase or highlight. Actually, there is all uh, there is all there. There was already like this Hindu Buddhist influence uh, culture within the Malay uh, Malay region at that time. So, hmm. um, but then of course, due to limited space, that and also not just limited space, but limited artifact as well, we cannot like hmm. really like uh, focus on this kind of narrative. So that's why maybe like people often uh, overlook this kind of uh, yeah. object or narrative, right? Uh, but but then actually, it's or it's it's in the National Museum, and we highlight this kind of narrative actually okay. to the public. Mm. Yeah. I think I, I read before the Hikayat Meru Mahawangsa, the Keda Annals, they mentioned that this area of Baras Para was the um, Ganga Nagara. So this yeah. was, um, so this period, like, maybe 110 CE to 1025 when the Chola kingdom of yeah. Tamil Nadu mm. invaded. So this, mm. I'm, I'm not sure, if, does this belong to the Ganga Nagara period? That one still, um, uh, we cannot really verify on that. Yeah, because we've, we can, um, some say it can be, it can be uh, during the Ganga period or so, but then because we cannot like really determine when exactly, uh, when is the date of the statue, right? So we just mm. use like an estimation of the date, like between 7 and 12th century. So but then it can be, yeah, century. yeah, but then it can be uh, during the Ganga period. And then actually the Avalo uh, state, uh, Avalo Kiteshvar or what we call Avalo in the National Museum is quite, um, Unique or special, I would say, compared to like the Avalo statue in like in India or in China, so on. Because actually, if you let next time, if you go to the National Museum, if you look closely, uh, at the bottom part of the statue, uh, there is actually like a tiger skin, or a mm. tiger skin whereby you can see like a tiger, uh, uh, face or something like that. So we actually, uh, you, this tiger feature is only available for the Avalo. Statue in the in the Nusantara region or in the Southeast Asia region only, so yeah. it's quite special compared to the um, compared to the uh, Avalo in India as well. And then actually, this Avalo was was loaned. We we uh, the National Museum loaned this statue to the uh, Met Museum, Metropolitan Art Museum in New York. New I York. Think, okay. Yeah, I think in two thousand. Uh, that one, I'm not sure. I, I forgot. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. The two thousand something, yeah. So I mean, you can see that this uh this statue is quite important as well. Okay. So move on to the last artifact, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So this one actually is my favorite artifact in the museum. Actually, uh, handwritten of Qurans. Uh, actually, this is like this is the Trangana Quran. So because I'm uh, so my research is basically most uh, centers around uh, the Islamic arts artifacts, mostly on the Quran artifacts, a uh, Malay Quran artifact. So this Quran, uh, when I do the research a little bit about this Quran, I managed to find out that actually this Quran is from the Trangana Quran. So because they have this uh, Trangana futures, actually, um, if we uh, look closely later, uh, maybe if you. Uh, if you can Google or uh, come to the museum later, because when we, uh, we display the Quran uh, for uh, with the two uh, with the two front pages of the Quran. So basically, yeah. if you know Quran, we have like these two first chapters, uh, the, the Al Fatiha and also the Al Baqarah chapters. So whereby these two chapters are heavily decorated with beautiful illuminations. So in that illumination, is a re uh, we have like. Uh, beautiful colors of like gold and also we have this uh, blue color and so on so and then uh, according to like uh, the dr annabel gallup uh, a british library curator uh, head of british library curator, she said like the the trangana quran actually is the most beautiful malay quran in the nusantara because of the heavily heavy usage of the gold and also and the beautiful uh calligraphy and so on that what that was written in the quran so and and also but then uh, this quran actually uh, from 19th century and uh, 18 or 19th century so it's quite late quite new not really quite early it's because we don't have like uh artifacts from during like during the 15th or 14th century compared like, to the west right so yeah actually and then from a quran actually you can uh, learn more about how it was produced and where it come from so actually like if you study in the Islamic arts, usually you will only see uh, the Quran uh, that the uh, the Quran comes from the Middle East, like from the the Turkey and so on, from the Iran. But actually, 
in Malay in the Malay region in the Nusantara region we also have our own quite distinctive uh, Malay Quran that is quite special yeah mm. so this is what I want uh, I hope that I can highlight yeah. actually to, to the public actually there are a lot of many uh, scholars and uh, local scholars and academicians already done research about this but i'm hoping that maybe i can follow them and yeah okay. so we can expect all this mm. so the Trungano quran how old is it why is it more special than maybe from derma or pasai or Aceh? why is it uh, uh, how significant and then you said that there was gold leaf in bakara how bakara uh, yeah and, uh, so because these are for when people die right so right al fatiha and you recite the al bakara mm -hmm. so the pages are more elaborate is it yes yes uh, i think um, just it's because of uh it is most more much more special because of the illumination or the decoration inside of the quran i mean it's not just uh the al-baqarah and also the al-fatiha chapters that are heavily decorated uh, heavily decorated in the first two pages but actually at the last two pages of the quran whereby we yeah. have the chapters of uh uh surah al Anas, uh, uh, class and so on and also heavily decorated with uh this beautiful illumination with gold and so on and also within uh in, in the in the middle of the quran also usually they also uh decorate these uh pages with uh, illumination as well and then usually happen on i think in the chapter of al isra or something yeah so i think the the main reason why it is called like most beautiful because mostly on the illumination and how okay. it was um decorated and designed i think for the quran yeah compared to the other oh. quite Normal, actually. How old? Uh, yeah, like it's uh 19th century. Uh, so it's quite late la. Mm, because I uh, knew la quite 19 because we don't have like much much more early. I mean, we yeah, have we have now. the what is it? That inscription stone in Changanu, right? Batu yeah, Basu, like the time, right? yeah, 13, but then, yeah, but then uh we don't have like that's that's I think that's the problem of the <laughs> Malaysia history. We don't have much more. I mean, artifacts that much more earlier than that. So that's why mm. we have like this. Uh, also like they also the bronze drum and also this uh the tin tin coins uh tin money and also this we have like the famous uh hang tuah mural that we display in the uh gallery uh, also the avalo as well mm. and this also is pending, a, pending a belt yeah. is it yeah belt yeah belt buckle yeah mm. and also this one is the buddha statue that we found in i think they found in um I think. Uh, uh, so. It's your Lost Kingdoms uh, exhibition you held last yeah. year in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, yeah, Lost Kingdoms exhibition, yeah. Mm. And also we have Istana Satu here. Uh, actually, Istana Satu is a part of the Trangano Palace. Yeah, okay. Trangano Palace, uh, Trangano Palace, well, sorry, Trangano Palace in Trangano. So whereby they, at that time, they moved uh, the original palace from Trangano, from Kuala Trangano to the Museum Negara. So actually, if you go to the Trangano State Museum, there are a lot of uh, other palaces as well because actually the Trangano uh, Palace is quite big. Uh, so they have really like this small, small, small palace, right? So Istana Satu is just one part of them and we bring it to the National Museum. Mm. Mm, okay. So just to recap, you have four galleries. You have an Orang Asli and a Borijin. Uh, gallery, you have a musical instruments gallery, you yeah. have this Istana Satu donated by Sultan Zainal Abidin from Trinidad. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The first or the third? Oh. I think the second one. The, the second one. one? Yeah, the second one. Okay. Mm. And then um, you also have a gallery too, and you also have, I think, Proton Sagas, Locomotive. Yeah, yeah there are the other exhibitions where we displayed uh, the bus mini. <laughs> I think that's yeah. one of the, uh, everyone's favorite, and also uh, yeah. all these uh, trains. Uh, yes. the trains uh, in the front of the uh, Pintu Gerbangs and yeah. so on. And also we have this, uh, the fire truck and so on. And also we have statue actually, the King George yes. statue, Frank Sutton statue. Yeah. Oh, mm. Frank Sutton statue. It must be in yeah. a corner because you don't put yeah, it in front. In corner. Corner. Yeah, we don't put yeah. it in front. Yeah. The, I think Frank Sutton statue is supposed to be at the government offices, you know. It's yes. not and then, some building. Then yes, now it's a national then, museum, tapi yeah. I, I don't know, Bawa Poko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think like, yeah, that that is a really interesting yeah. uh, story. I think narrative like how how the public perceive like the colonial statues, right? Like we just don't care. We just but then we just put it over there and just display it to the public. Yeah. And yeah, I mean like it's uh like 
I think like the ones that when like the Black Lives Matters, I think I would say during that period, like I think last year, and then mm-hmm. there's a lot. Uh, there's that the one time like in uh, in Francis Light statue in Penang was vandalized, right? So I'm um, so I'm quite surprised that that I'm thankful actually that didn't happen to <laughs> the statues in the yes, National yes. Museum. Yeah. So so I do. I mean that that would be another quite interesting topic. Yeah, we will talk about it later as well yeah. about the challenges in weaving a Malaysian <laughs> narratives. How do you also include like some of these European civil servants who you know by function colonization is not to be glorified, but they actually had a big effect on everyday lives. People grew up, grew friendships. They actually did their best as civil servants. I think they should be highlighted. So a proper place for these civil servants, British civil servants, Chinese and Indians, and uh, yeah. Ibans, Dayaks, um, Kadazan yeah. Dusuns, and just a lot of people who have to fit in into this national museum. So just yeah. allocating that space as your job as Azam, Mr. Azam. <laughs> uh, so I think maybe we'll talk about this in a bit later. Yeah. Just um, mm-hmm. to recap, uh, because I, I visit some museums in the world. I know the British Museum was born in 1753, 8 million artifacts, 80,000 on display, very big. <laughs> And then you have the National Museum of Jakarta and then um, National Museum of Singapore. Both of them are important because uh, Sir Stanford Raffles, a big patron of Malay arts, they play a huge role in um, curating national history, natural history, um, mm-hmm. and also in, in Singapore Museum and also in Java. Lah. So mm-hmm. uh, Javanese history at the National Museum of Indonesia. Indonesia's um, National Museum is 1778. 150,000 collections, 67,000 on display. And the National Museum of Cambodia was born in 1920 with 14,000 collections. So Malaysian Museum is the youngest among these three. You know, it's 1963, although the earlier one in 1906. And then we have, uh, you mentioned 500,000. Tapi inside this museum, you say with 1,500, is it? How many mm, yeah. do we have in the National Museum? Only, uh, all, I think it's only like 1,566. Yeah. yeah. So, but then uh, we How do also... increase that? Uh, because like British Museum, 80,000. Then uh, National J- Museum of Jakarta, 67,000. Cambodia, 14,000. So, Malaysia cannot like lose, right? We must have a little <laughs> bit more. So, I don't yeah. know. What yeah, is I was your hoping challenge? That... How was your yeah. challenge? 500,000, you know, you say in the JMM. Mm-hmm. Okay. But and then, then how, how are... do you display that? Uh. But then we also, I think... We at the moment we can only like do temporary exhibitions, where but like the, like for the like uh, the Lost Kingdom exhibition, like where we dug out all this uh, ex- uh all the collections that we that we store in the in, in the storage, and that and that's the only time that we uh, manage to like to display some of them. And then mm-hmm. I mean not just I mean five hundred thousand. I mean not just uh this uh we kept in the in the storage actually. I mean we also display in other museum as well. Like uh, we also display in the Malay Ethnology Museum and also the Avarogy mm. Museum. And also we have uh, in other states as well, we have this Lukot Museum mm. and mm. Kota Kayang and Perlis and so on. So yeah, I was hoping that, I think that's the biggest challenge because of the limited space. So maybe in the future, hopefully if governments uh, want to spend a lot of money and then uh, like to expand the National Museum, I hope that we can put more of the collections um, inside the National Museum. I think maybe yes, uh absolutely. the one that yeah I think I think we just maybe don't 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 need to like uh maybe don't need to just focus on the obviously as well I mean we have the upcoming uh Sarawak 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 museum as well I think okay. that would be like the second I think maybe I'm not sure first or second biggest uh museums in the uh in the Southeast Asia so I was hoping That's that really yes yeah, so, yeah Sarawak is I think I I think can uh is pioneering in like displaying all these uh collections that they have. So I was ho- I'm hoping that maybe the National Museum can follow the suit of the Sarawak National Museum as well. It's Sarawak uh, State Museum. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. So do you plan to show any of these collections that are in your repository now? Do you have how many in your Museum Nagara repository that you... Because like the Lost Kingdom exhibition, I'm just going to give an introduction. 103 exhibits from 12 Lost Kingdoms, including Funan, Chenla, Angkor, Pew, Daravati, Champa, Lanka, Suka, Kedatua, uh, Srivijaya, Sailendra, Mataram, and Majapahit. And some of them are collaborations and loans uh, from yeah. the National Museum of Indonesia and Cambodia. Cambodia so how yeah. many of them in this Lost Kingdom exhibition belongs to Malaysia? How many of them are in the repository and that we can take out and curate and show to the public? I think like, I think 90% of the ex- uh, collections on the exhibition is belongs to the uh, Department of Museum Malaysia. So mm. yeah, I think uh, to have like maybe a second exhibition that related with that kind of narrative, it would be good for us, like for yeah. us, like 
and then i mean to i think i need to uh, tell to the public as well that i mean we uh, don't i mean we have like bad types of loss of i mean types of uh, collection actually not just uh, related with the ethnology as well we also have like jewelries okay. uh, mostly in the yeah, money art culture yeah, you can Malay list Ad down Ad a type of exhibition um, that you have. Like, I think ethnography, numismatics means coins. Yeah, Tell coins. Tell us yeah, some of the coins. items you curate and show. Yeah, yeah okay, numis numismatic. Okay. And then actually, this one uh, belongs to the uh, curator, I mean, the collections division. But okay, I just I need to try to remember <laughs> all okay. the collections that we have. And also, we have the decorative arts, um, decorative uh, native arts. arts. And also, we have like uh, woodwork. Uh, mm. wood, wood, right. So, and there was a lot of wood, wood. and uh, ceramics. We also have lots mm. of ceramics as well. Ceramic mm. and uh, musical instruments uh, we have, and also furniture. Um, yeah, and then uh, l uh, items that related with the independence. Like we have the first flag of the Federation of Malaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then first yeah, speaker seat of Parliament. Yeah, first it's speaker seat of Parliament. India, is it or Britain? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, in I think uh, India, Indian government. Yeah, yeah. Indian mm -hmm. government. So we have yeah. a seat from India. We have tiles from Pakistan. What, yeah, what did you from... give us? And then colonization. Uh, colonization. You mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean like in the colonial uh, era gallery, uh, we actually we don't have actually much uh, collections that related with the colonial era because uh, I think most of the collections that we have we already gave to the state museum so the ones that we have that are currently display in the uh in the national museum it's just like some parts of some bits and parts of like what is left like for example like the first period we have like the portuguese uh section whereby we try to display all this kind of uh what what, what was happened uh during the portuguese era then also the dutch uh, we also some have some furnishes that related to the dutch and like the, in the even in the, for the British period also we have like the small collections of like pistols and guns and so on. Mm. So I think that I think the the biggest challenge for the nationalism I think is maybe to find more collections of this of colonial era so that we can display yeah. and showcase to the public. Yeah. Yep, yep, mm. yep. Because this colonial era is not that far away. Basically, mm. my father or my grandfather was living in the colonial era. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's not even history; it's their their life. I don't know. And yeah. They, they, mm -hmm. A lot of things in the colonial era actually should be shown, yeah. uh, not because of glorifying colonization, but because yes. it happened. It is a part of Malaysian history, and yes. there are good and bad sides to it also. And then the museum should show all sides. You know. Yes. Sure. So I think okay. with with that we are moving into so we are moving into the main part of today's conversation, which is the challenges of weaving a Malaysian narrative. So for today, for one hour and three minutes, Azam has talked about in great lengths his duties, his role, and how does the National Museum work. And then he went on to talk about our National Museum history and how different people contributed to the tiles to the Chonglantai who did the mosaic right. in front. Yeah. And then uh, Sato of Johor, Sato of uh, Trenganu donated the Istana Satu. So I think it was a joint national effort. Tunggu Abdul Rahman selected the design of a new country that was a bit more Malay, which is a Kampung house. So mm -hmm. I mean, just different parts of the country coming together. So brings it back to this um, topic that we're going to talk about for today. Lah. So how do you form a Malaysian narrative at National Museum? Azam, yeah, any comments? Hmm. So, uh, how do you form? So basically, the one that currently we display is like the main important narrative, the historical narrative. Yes. So, like the one I mentioned, like prehistoric, uh, prehistoric gallery, and also, and then we have the Malay Kingdom galleries, and also we have the, uh, the colonial era gallery, and also the Malaysia Today gallery, where we discuss mm. about, uh, where we talk about the how the, uh, how the nation gained independence. So I think uh, for me, the current narrative is quite okay, actually. I mean, to tell the basic, I mean, the mainstream history of the national history to the public. Yeah. But then yeah. I was, I'm hoping that maybe in the future that we can uh, to try to be more inclusive, uh, where we can include uh, more stories from other races as well, from, uh, from the Chinese, Indian. I mean, the stories are there, actually, inside the National Gallery, but perhaps I mean, like I said, due to the limited space and also due to limited collections that we have, uh, perhaps in the future that we can form this kind of narrative um, in the National Museum. So, and and, and I, for, for me personally, I think that the best uh, narrative actually to put in the National Museum is the culture, culture, culture narrative, whereby you can yes. showcase 
every races or every uh, uh, races uh, uh, culture uh, to yes. the public, uh, and then at that time you can like showcase like what uh, what these kind of races that I mean that uh, include in the, uh, in our historical narrative. I mean in the Malaysia uh, timeline narrative so on. Yes, so yes. yeah, and also uh, the perhaps in the future as well we can put uh, the natural history collection as well. Natural history, I would yeah. say that that would be like the biggest attraction for me, like mm. for kids, uh, because kids love so much uh, natural history. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that maybe in the future, like in, for the Malaysian narrative, we can put that as well. So yeah, collection, uh, culturals and also natural history. That's That would be pers per my personal opinion for yeah, the future yeah, of yeah. the National Museum. Mm. Yeah. So Azam has uh, recommended that they include more histories of more diverse peoples like Chinese, Indian, local histories, uh, Eastern Malaysian um, local histories, uh, maybe yeah, even Eastern some of the British um, colonial um, history yeah, yeah. as well. So just being more inclusive and showing different viewpoints. If any of you in the comment section have anything to suggest, or you can leave them in the comments box. And then also if any questions for Azam, please leave them in the comment box. And then... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I so personally, I think I'm going to quote Paul Kratoska. He's the honorable editor at the Royal Asia, uh, Asiatic Society of Malaysia, Embras. So, I mean, um, I think the National Museum is very good as in it tells us very neatly the different stages of our country's evolution. But it doesn't go into community, social history, local history. Like, for example, he said that our focusing on everyday lives, conditions of how people live, have fun, fall sick, how they think and organize, usually avoiding the government. So I think mo for most people, they are not the kings. 90% of people are in Malay, Rakyat Marhain, uh, you know, Rakyat Jilata, and I think their stories matter the most. Having this everyday social history should be more included. Besides just saying, oh, this period is the Japanese, this period is the British. So more like narratives on what every day people live their lives. You know, How are they affected by global trends and mm -hmm. things like that? So that was one point. La. And um, and then on top of the, uh, one more thing, on the, oh, the minority perspectives. I think yeah. as an ethnic Chinese myself, I want to talk about some of the um, narratives in Malaysia. Narratives in Malaysia include, oh, the Malays did this, the Chinese did this, the Indians did this. So it's very mm -hmm. into very separate boxes. But in yeah. fact, I think there are a lot of times where different races, they came together like to build the National Museum mm -hmm. or they came together mm -hmm. to do... Um, they have a lot of multiracial families, you know, Baba yeah, and Nyonya, yeah. Peranakan, yes, Jawi yeah, yeah. Peranakan, Indian Peranakan, yeah. Malays with different ethnic groups. I think all these stories, right, can be highlighted yeah. in the National Museum. Mm -hmm. And and it's not just the, the racial part, it is the national subcultures. So among the Indians, for example, I think the first uh, first wave of immigration, I mean, the, the Indians have been here for a long time, the Chola dynasty in 1,000 years, and even longer, 2,500 years, they say, under Bujang Valley civilization. But the modern ones, they say that the estate laborers came from the lower caste, their darker skin. And then the second wave came, they are more lighter skin. They work in clerical work, like uh, Malayalis. And then the, mm -hmm. the northern Indians who are very fair skin, they work as a police. You know? so, so even this national history for Indians, you know, they come to the national history, they want to know Indians, how they come to Malaysia. Um, they have, uh, how do they feel? How do they fit into this project? So different, uh, so for Indians and for Chinese too, Chinese, they came from different parts of South China. Um, yeah, so like Guangdong province, they came from Quanzhou, they came from Amoy. So these are the ports. And then they came in different waves and they had different jobs. I know the Hakkas because I'm Hakka. So they all did mm -hmm. like mining, you know, Palombong, BJ Timah. And then later, the last was Hainanese. So they did uh, cooking, hotel, leisure, hospitality. And then Teochews became... Um, um, shopkeepers so it's not just like just you know malay chinese indian is all yeah, the sub it's all these subcultures and all these other yes. things well. yeah um, and then the, the bidayo the iban the yeah, iban, the yeah. The river East mountain East, yeah. god spiritual Bajau, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many things you know not talking yeah, about so many, yeah. yeah so, so that, yeah i think that i think that, that would yeah. that be like the biggest challenge for the national museum i mean like so far uh, we are planning like to do a, a chatty exhibition uh chatty exhibition coming soon Chetty, so I mean, right? yeah, Chetty. So I mean, that's like this. what, yeah, yeah, not not Chetty Money Lender, the Chetty uh, communities, uh, communities, in, uh, okay. uh, Chetty communities. So we are hoping that like doing this like small temporary exhibitions that we can showcase the highlight of the minorities as well. So, but then like, uh, I think I agree with you. I mean, like the National Museum is quite, um, that's our biggest challenge, like to include everyone. 
But at the same time, uh, we have to rethink again, like what is the concept of the National Museum? Like for us, like perhaps like some of, uh, it depends on the country and it depends on yes, the government as well. Yeah. No, uh, uh, I haven't this about that. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, uh, you talk about the National uh, Museum of Germany and National Museum of Malaysia. Uh, yeah. what, <laughs> what is a museum? I remember. Yeah, so yeah, maybe uh, you can talk about that. So too. I mean, I think like some, some parts of the countries, uh, the National Museum, they don't really like, showcase or highlight the, the national history. Like we just take uh, uh, examples uh, in the UK museums, like the National British. Museum in the UK, we have, they have the British Museum and also they have the Natural History Museum, they have the Science Museum and the Victoria Albert Museum. And then most of these museums, they don't really like tell the historical, uh, chrono uh, chronological historical narrative in their museum. Like, like for us, I think uh, like most of the, not just Malaysia, I mean like, most of the Asian museum, when it comes to the National Museum, they will try to showcase like the mainstream or basic uh, historical chronological perspective. So I think mm. the question of the concept of the National Museum is always like some, it's always debatable. It's always yes. something like whether you want to put a historical narrative or you want to put like, for example, like um, a cultural historical narrative or you want to put uh, the minorities narr uh, narrative. So. I think it depends on how uh, we engage this kind of discussion and how we want to portray to the public what kind of national museum that we want to be. So I was yeah. hoping that maybe in the future that uh, we can have this kind of, or not just future, maybe now nowadays right now, right, we can have like more of kind of discussion, like hoping that maybe this is what kind of a national museum that we want to have in our country. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, the National Cultural Policy of 1971 mentions the Malay language, mm -hmm. Malay culture, Islam will be the main culture mm -hmm. of Malaysia, but other suitable cultures uh, will be included yeah. in national mm -hmm. culture. But at the same time, there's also a tension whereby Kuala Lumpur is a Chinese village in the past, like according to Frank Sutton, a purely Chinese tin mining village. So, I mean, mm -hmm. how does this uh, narrative, yeah. local history, mm -hmm. geography, geography, demographic, national culture and image, how yeah. they come together? Mm -hmm. But I, but I guess this is an ongoing dialogue. It won't be yeah. soft today. It's going to be yeah. a slow process. And um, mm -hmm. I think the National Museum has come a long way since 2008 and even 1963 to be um, talking about more diverse viewpoints. Mm -hmm. so one, more, one more last thing I want to bring up because just now I talked about a, yeah, talking about local social history, talking about minority narratives. The third one is, um, I, I realized our museum talked about how the world shapes Malaysia, but not enough how much Malaysia shapes the world. Because uh, there, there Okay, this is partially minorities as well, but um, a lot of uh, pioneer Indians and Chinese in Malaysia, they contributed to the freedom and um, nationalism in China and India. Sun Yat-sen raised money in Malaysia um, to end the Qing Dynasty in the Sinai Revolution. Um, a lot of people here go to China to fight the Japanese. A lot mm -hmm. of people here go to India to fight the... Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people here go to India to fight the British. And then they, some of them collaborated with the Japanese as mm -hmm. well to fight the British. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then also like 10 years before the Alliance Party or AMNO created Malaysia, there was also another nationalism movement, um, Pusat mm -hmm. Tenaga Rakyat and yeah, All Malayan yeah. Joint Action Council. So um, they launched a nationwide strike, uh, Hartau in 1947. Yeah, so okay. there, there was uh, another independence movement besides mm -hmm. the Alliance Party. So I think they are, not to say who is right, it's just having yes. that picture I mean, yeah, the national and museum. also to, yeah to include them the vo their voice as well in national museum yes. i think it would be yes. interesting like this kind of discussion like perhaps yeah, yeah. maybe in the future or um, yeah. yeah the ongoing discussion yeah, yeah. i I'll, actually i also quite interested with that kind of history the, yeah the side of history of malaysia right i think yeah. i mean that that's i mean that's the that's always like the biggest challenge for the national museum to include that yeah. as well yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised because uh, uh, Malaysia always, you know, uh, you get people colonizing us one after another. Mm -hmm. But then for one time in the 1940s or earlier, we contributed independence of Indonesia. A lot of mm -hmm. the Indians came to Malaysia. They organized their revolution in Malaysia. China, they organized the revolution here. So Malaysia is a place for all these homeland countries, you know, Indonesia, <laughs> India, and China to have independence. So, I mean, yeah. all these narratives are, you know, quiet. So, I mean, yeah. So just something to talk about. La. So I think yeah. last... Um, La lastly, yeah, lastly, also one more thing is that I met this guy. Uh, his name is Naj Hussein. He took me on a tour. He walked around Rumah Tangsi, so that's Lok Hall. Yeah, so he mm -hmm. talked about uh, contributing to the UNESCO listing uh, of Penang mm -hmm. and Malacca. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, right, um, uh, Malaysia, they were hesitant on giving this UNESCO listing World Heritage Site because a lot of this uh, local council policy, they were a lot of 
historical architecture has been damaged. So the city inner core is not perfect. But they gave us the heritage status anyway because of intangible heritage. One of them was having a mosque, a temple, a church on the same street. This can be in Tukang Emas, mm-hmm, Jalan, mm-hmm. or Jalan Kapitan Keling, uh, Masjid in, uh, yeah, in Penang, in Malacca, Penang, in Kuala Lumpur, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, HS Lee High Street. So th- this is a intangible heritage. So I mean, we talk about museums, what we can see. Sometimes it's the culture that's intangible. That also contributed to our you know, heritage site. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then the very, very last one I want to say uh, is that uh, I realized a lot of Malaysian history, it's in uh, different languages. So uh, mainly Jawi, but also there's also older scripts, right? Before Jawi. So Renchong, mm-hmm. Kawi. Yeah, Kawi. I don't see that Kawi. in the National Kawi. Museum. And then I think we, I think we have, I think we have yeah. a few. Uh, we have uh, like mm-hmm. Champa manuscripts uh, yeah. in, the, in the Gallery B. So yeah, mm-hmm. actually, uh, I think that's, that's the biggest, uh, not biggest challenge, actually. It's not just that we don't want to highlight. Uh, actually, we also lack of the collection as well mm. uh, in the National Museum. Like, for example, uh, to be honest, like, even if you look in the history of Malacca, you know, yes, like, yes. we uh, glorify the history of Malacca. I mean, we yes. also, like, narrate and uh, highlight the history of Malacca in the National yes. Museum. But then, yeah. if you look closely, actually, we don't have uh, the, a, lot things, uh, huh? yeah, a lot of things, artifacts, like, we don't have like the Chris or uh, we have like the, the Taming Sari. And everything. Yeah, Taming Sari, that one uh, currently at the Para, right? Uh, the Kuala yeah. Kansa Gallery, uh, that one belongs to the Sultan Nazri. So yeah, so I think the problem with the Malaysian history, we learn so much from the manuscripts because we have lots of narrative and yes. historical narrative from the manuscript. I mean, like we have abundance of them, like from the Sulalatu Salatin, Ikhaya yes. Raja Pasai, Ikhaya Mero yes. Mahawang, so like that tells. Yes all the history of Malaysia. But then yes. the problem with the Malaysia history is always about collections and evidence. Like we don't have much collection that to showcase, like to prove like the evidence um, yes. of the, the kingdom of the history. Like like even mm. from, uh, like even for, uh, for Hang Tua as well, right? it's always like this ongoing debate whether he's, he's still, I mean, whether he's really existed or not or so on, because like they, they don't have like this really, uh, solid i mean examples or artifacts so yeah. yeah i think that's always that is also like an ongoing have- yeah ongoing discussion like the collections and the lack of collection in our malaysian uh, history yeah you you mentioned the malacca uh, sultanate so i think we learn a lot about the undang undang tubuh melaka hukum mm. kanum melaka so if we prize it as the one of the most complete malay laws in the malay uh, um, archipelago um i think we should also put a maybe a script or Batu Basurat, or we also must have the translation in English yeah, or other mm-hmm. languages so people can understand. Not everyone mm-hmm. will read Jawi. People should learn, but not everyone mm-hmm. will. So you must uh, have that um, translation so I can understand. Yeah. Or maybe even the Japanese propaganda poster, right? If I can see yeah. in English or Pasa Malaysia, I can understand the content. So I think maybe just putting that translation for some of those, mm-hmm. you know, Jawi script, Chinese script, Indian scripts, you know, it, it goes a long way to yeah. appreciating. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we covered so many yeah, things. Yeah, so many things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then so I yeah, also... I know. I don't know. <laughs> That's why, uh, so many things you covered. Like I like this in Indonesia. There's this uh, Negara Katagama. So in Malaysia, I think we use a lot of, you know, Dakwat is an Arabic word because I think mm. um, Muslim traders spread Islam in, in this area of the world. So Dakwat, Kertas, Arabic word. So a lot of things are written in paper, but our... Pre, uh, pre, pre previously, I think a lot of it was on lonta, like palmyra mm-hmm. leaves. So, do we have any of that in Malaysia, like in Renchong or not? I think we, uh, for the for the National Museum, we have a few actually, uh, lonta mm-hmm. collections, but they're mostly from uh, from Bali, I think, yeah, from Bali, Bali. and so on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, originally from uh, the uh, the Malay Peninsula, we don't have, yeah. But I think I think those collections actually exist existed mm. i mean we have actually i mean it's not just maybe not belongs to the national museum or at the state museum maybe it belongs to the the to the public i mean to like to the normal Mahan people like okay. some things yeah some maybe we need to do lots of research and maybe some of these people they do have own these collections but they just don't know um like want to donate to us or they just want to keep by themselves or who knows right so yeah yeah Yeah. people who are watching today i mean if you have any family history you would like to put it into a national museum for the whole country to see yeah please donate your personal Mm -hmm. family collection family history to the national museum and with that we'll move on to the 
Um, next question. Ah, okay. I think it's quite related to what we say already just now. How do you? What are your favorite museums in the country and around the world? And why do you think the National Museum is important to Malaysia? Yeah. First. Thing, okay. Yeah. Uh, my favorite museum. I won't say that I won't buy it actually, but, but because I am really interested with the Islamic Arts Museum. Yes. I say Islamic I like Arts, it a so, lot too. Yeah, so I would say that my favorite museums would be the Islamic Arts Museum because it's really, because they have really like really this beautiful collections of the Islamic arts and also because I am really interested with Islamic art. So I'm quite biased and I would say that would be my one of the my main uh, favorite museum. And I also like uh, the Bangnagara, uh, yes. Bangnagara and Art Gallery Museum because mm -hmm. they have these really quite spacious exhibitions and uh, space and uh, showcase like the history of the uh, the numismatic uh, uh, hist uh, history, right? And also they also have like really cool of art gallery uh, art, uh, artwork as well. Uh, so I'm really quite, uh, I feel like whenever I, I go to that museum, I feel like so peaceful, <laughs> like some yeah. so happy, yeah. So yeah, I think that's those, those are the two main favorite museums. Uh, yes. Actually, uh, I think I would say that the Terengganu State Museum as well is my favorite because mm. if you, uh, mostly because of the architecture of the museum, because it was, I think like that is, I would say that would be like the most beautiful Malay architecture museum that we have in Malaysia because okay. of the Malay work of the Terengganu, okay? Mm. And then that would be in Malaysia. Uh, mm. Uh, and outside um british museum no yeah british museum uh yeah but actually for the outside museum for the obviously museum mostly i like the museum just because of the environment the mm. ambiance that they have the british museum yeah i like because when i was studying there i went to the british museum a lot i mostly i just don't i don't go to just to, uh to see the collection actually i just like to uh just to lay out and just stay at the, the great court and so on i just like to mm. uh they uh, just see everyone who comes to the museum yeah. on British Museum and then also the Victoria Albert Museums in the uh, mm. in London. Yeah, that also. And also in another one in, in Scotland. Uh, what is it called? I mean, in the Scotland Museum, the, some of the, the National, uh, the National Scot, uh, Museum also is one of my favorite. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, why the question of why the National Museum is important to the country? Yes. I think because it, because the National Museum uh, is a repository for our historical and heritage collections. So that would be like the, I think that's the biggest important uh, important reason why uh, the National Museum is important, right? So mm. without the National Museum, I mean, where do you want to keep all this kind of, uh, all these uh, national heritage collections, right? Yes, so the correct. first one, yeah. And then the second one, it tells the story of our nation to the yes. public. I mean, of course, we do tell um, the basically we uh, the, the National Museums tell the story of the mainstream historical uh, perspective. But then actually, if you look closely to the uh, to the narrative, we mm. include everyone. I mean, the multiracial part, like the one that I mentioned, like how the National Museum was uh, established and how we get independent as well uh, is because it's a lot of works from everyone mm. and so on. So. I think that's the. I think I mean where 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 actually you can learn the history other than from textbook, is of course from the National Museum, right? So when you go to the National Museum, you can have the kind of ambiance and feelings of how do you want to learn the history and the importance of the history of the nation to the public, and then not just uh, as a repository or a story of a nation, but it also be actually alternative educational institution for yes. the children yeah i think because we the national museum did a lot i would say a lot of uh, programs for the especially more uh, mostly on the educate uh, for the uh, to the public mostly on the children like for example yeah. we have this uh, signature programs yeah. like before this we uh, every year during uh, the month of august the month of deca we we conduct um, uh, and uh, this program called Night at the Museum, where mm. we invite all these cool kids come to the museum and okay. experience and, and 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 sleep at the museum. Yeah, so mm. they so they can experience this kind of environment. How how does it like to sleep at the museum, right? And ah. then we also uh, 
uh, and also we have this another uh, signature uh, program we call it uh, nostalgia anak kampung uh, mm. the 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 and uh, this village people uh mm. nostalgia whereby i mean there are a lot of many people like nowadays especially kids in towns they don't experience this kind of uh how the village people live in the past yes. so especially and then at this time during this time that we try to showcase like the traditional games to the publics and then mostly like everyone really enjoy when they come mm. and just not the traditional games or traditional way of life yes. like whereby we try to showcase how you want to um uh cooking the traditional cooking some yes. of the malay cookings and other also yes. malay traditional dishes as well to the public so yeah i think alternative education institution is one of yes. the main important reason as why wadi national museum is important and another one is of course it's a place of for tourism i yeah. mean of course, for every country they uh, yes. they will have a national museum whereby they will showcase and tell the story of national museum so yeah the national museum is a part of that narrative and storyline of i mean it's a product of a tourism to showcase the highlight i mean to attract as well people to come to our country as well yes yeah. very good so we talk about education um it's an educational institution it is a place of history where we know we come from a tourism for uh, foreigners yeah. to know where we come from as well um you mentioned um denai alam denai malam so that's night at the museum um yeah. we talk about all the other programs because we talk about traditional games nostalgia anak kampung the lost kingdoms exhibition the merdeka exhibition what are the programs run by the museum negara that um the citizens of this country can participate in and uh, do you have a do you have a dinosaur at your denai malam <laughs> dinosaur we don't have <laughs> dinosaur, <a> movie. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see dinosaur i mean you, you can go to what is it called uh pusat sains negara yeah but if oh, you go to pusat okay. negara there's a dinosaur over there <laughs> because yeah. uh, we don't have like this uh uh natural history collection that related with dinosaur i think yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. and then i think in, uh at the moment because of the museum closed uh yeah. i mean everyone can participate or engage with the nationalism through our social media because our social media are quite active nowadays uh, yes. you can go to uh, for the museum negara you can go to the museum negara rasmi uh, facebook okay. page and also we have this uh, museum negara official instagram page uh, where we mm -hmm. every day we will uh, show um uh, showcase all this kind of um uh all the programs uh, that we conduct like all the online quizzes and oh, yeah, also, online quizzes yeah online quizzes and also we have like this uh, sh uh some of the posts that we try to artifact highlight all the, uh, artifacts yeah artifact pilihan collections and so on and also before this we have this um uh program what we call uh cherry at museum i think mostly on cherry the is yeah cherry at museum where we showcase all this DIY stuff that you can do uh, where we yes. target yeah i think this program we mostly target uh, for the um for the family whereby yeah. the family for the parents they can do this kind of activities with their kids uh, so and also uh, some of the uh, videos that we highlight in this uh, program uh, that are currently conducted by our own staff our own national museum staff and we mm. teach how to do this uh, like simple like a pencil box pencil case uh, from the recycle stuff and so on and yeah also i think i forgot to mention that we also have a whale skeleton from uh we have single whale, whale skeleton and uh, we and that i think that whale skeleton we currently display at the typing typing museum oh, typing. Yeah. yeah because because typing uh used to be uh like this natural history uh museum uh, until today like most of the national history collection that we display in the typing uh in the typing museum still like survive until today yeah okay oh after the bomb right so we shifted everything to typing museum is it yeah mm -hmm. yeah typing is like one of the oldest museum as well i think during the 19th century 1800 yeah yeah mm. yeah so uh you mentioned um artifact lehan cheria and museum so you can learn diy stuff you may yeah. nostalgia anak kampung can learn traditional games and food mm -hmm. then i malam so night in the museum i there's one more mm -hmm. tanya curator ask the curator yeah ice curator yeah i forgot i saw you that. did it the first one yeah, I, yeah last year whereby i did it where i, I tell the stories of uh, with your friend right there. yeah it's with the trangano uh, the trangano manuscript that one i did on 2020 and uh, recently yes. i also did uh one whereby i moderated uh, uh we call we don't call for the quality creator we call it curator at museum 
Uh, but okay. I invited uh, Professor Muhammad Mustaqim from the University of Science Islam Malaysia, where yes. we discuss and talk about the introduction of the Malay manuscript knowledge. Yeah, so yes. that one is also a part of our program, educational program. I mean, when? it's not uh, that. I mean, it's not just that. Actually, actually, uh, because we work because we work closely with the department itself. I mean, the Department of Museum did a lot of I mean program as well. I mean, mm. of course, we work closely with the museum volunteers, and also museum volunteers also have their own program that the national. Uh, I mean, everyone can participate. Like for example, like even if one if anyone wants to participate as. Uh, as a uh, and become a volunteer museum, uh, the volunteer uh, the museum volunteer will have like a training, in every September. But nowadays, because of the COVID, they can't really stop. I think like for last year and this year also. So yeah, that one is one of the direct, I mean, engagement of how public can participate with the national museum by joining the museum volunteer. And other oh. than that as well, uh, other than that as well. Um, for the Department of Museum as well, uh, Department of Museum Malaysia, they have uh, a lots of uh, uh, seminars that they conducted sometimes. Uh, seminar and also like uh, we also have this monthly where we call Bichara a curator, whereby each curator in the within the Department of Museum Malaysia will present about their research and so on. So yeah, I think when it comes to activities like programs, uh, the uh, the Department of Museum, Museum really conducted a lot of them. Yeah, including the National Museum as well. So what is your relationship uh, with the museum volunteers and the so, National Museum? So I don't have like, because I don't handle actually the, uh, the mm. museum volunteers because the museum volunteers are mostly uh, handled by the corporate, corporate com uh, mm. unit within the, uh, within, the, within the Department of Museum Malaysia. But sometimes um, this, uh, because uh, the museum volunteer, they are, main job is actually to give a uh, tour to tour the public assist. yeah tour to the public right during when when the museum opens but usually but since covid happens like um uh, we don't conduct uh the tours uh, the tours because of the museum uh, yes. uh we want to be cautious and because of the covid yes. right so yeah they are, they are mostly uh, usually the uh the tour will happen every day uh mm. mondays uh, mondays to uh I managed to uh, uh, Sunday and then the tours will be conducted at 10 a.m. So yeah, so my relationship sometimes I will help them because some mm -hmm. of the some of the volunteers will ask me like some of the information of the collections that we have in the National Museum, and also some uh, sometimes I think there were well, there was one time that I also gave gave a talk about the history of the National Museum to the to the volunteers. And also mm -hmm. it's not just that sometimes in terms of research also the museum volunteer does help, uh, I mean, really help a lot our curators as well. I mean, like, they also done uh, really a good uh, research. I mean, um, also published some books that related that with their research. For example, like, about the cheaties of the Malacca, yes. so on, yeah. So I think it's a symbiotic kind of relationship whereby we work together closely, whereby mm -hmm. the, we also need the museum volunteer to help us to conduct the uh, tours and also the Muslim volunteer also need us uh, in terms of <clears throat> in terms of giving uh, places or facilities or funding uh, in re I mean publishing their research and also do the mm. uh, tours as well. Yeah. Okay. So do the museum volunteers help you in research as well? Do you say yes. you give them funding? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like for me, not necessarily they help me directly, but like recently. When we did uh, a Luna exhibition, uh, Luna Clan exhibition in March, whereby okay. I asked some of the museum volunteers to help me to check uh, to profit some of our texts and also some of the information as well. Yeah, mm. Mm. that's that's one of the many examples that uh, we when we work together lah. But then also there are sometimes that uh, whereby we also ask them like to like for example that because we are planning to do an Chiti exhibition soon okay uh, Chiti Omlaka so because the museum volunteer already done uh, the research and published the book at that time we also ask the museum volunteer to help us to connect us with the Chiti people Chiti uh, community in Malacca so that's oh. one of them, another example yeah for everyone's information uh, the photos that we use in today's um, video call was from the Malaysian Tapestry. It is also a publication of the yeah. Museum Volunteers Malaysia. So check that out as well. 
Mm-hmm. If any of you want to participate with the National Museum, please sign up to be a museum volunteer. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, moving next. How do you, as a curator, I mean, all the things that we talk about, the challenges of having a Malaysian narrative, talking about collaboration with the JMM, um, um, how, what, what areas do you think the National Museum can improve? Okay. Uh, what are your, also, pair it up with what are your future plans um, yourself mm-hmm. as a curator? What do you want to see done in the National mm-hmm. Museum as a curator? Yeah. I think um, for me, definitely um, the space and facilities of the museum because uh, I think if we expand the museum, then we can put more artifacts and also we can put more museum collection inside the museum as well as narrative so yeah. that we can be more inclusive. And also, technology is a bonus. Yeah, I think, yeah, technology, the VR, AR, and so on, uh, technology, the audio guide <laughs> in the National Museum, it will be a plus, like, for us, like, uh, if you go to some part of the museum that you can see, like, the hologram of, of the collection, something, that or something, like, uh, or the video, this kind of complicated technology, uh, a video technology, like, it will be a bonus. Yeah. And also, okay. I think, yeah, I think... To ex- and also re- uh, maybe research, I mean, we should um, perhaps that the National Museum can do a lot of more research and like the oh, one research. that you just said, yeah, research yeah. now. So to include more this kind of yeah. narratives. Yeah, so and it, then so that we can, I mean, not necessarily that we need to exhibit all, but yeah. maybe from research, from publications, yeah, from the publication that we can try to tell the stories to the public. I mean, actually, the Department of Museum Malaysia has uh, did a lot of publication, actually, about yes. the, uh, the research that they've done. But perhaps, yes. like, more thorough research or more some aspect that we don't cover, perhaps that we, yes. that we can do in the future. Understand, understand. I agree with you as well. Like, um, also, maybe collaboration with NGOs. Like, uh, there are so many societies in you know, yeah. Malaysia. Mm-hmm. It's Heritage mm-hmm. Trust, Badan Warisan. Malaysian mm-hmm. branch of Royal Aesthetic Society, Malaysian Historical Society, Malaysia Design Archives. I see them, they have like matchboxes, like mm-hmm. gunny sack of the brass, you know, the rice bags. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they have a lot of cute, like pop kind of historical items. And then you see Malaya, Ting City, Anna Kazana. Yeah, so I mean, City, and also yeah. the, your, your own museum volunteers. I, yeah, all these mm-hmm. can be part of the research and the collaboration. Mm-hmm. I think I, I as a visitor, I, I love the National Museum. If I can come and I see like collaborations between all the institutions, I make this uh, the best museum in the country. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah something I look forward to as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. And um, also, like, uh, do you do like film screenings or what? Did, I think you mentioned discussions. You mentioned research. You mentioned um, festival exhibition. Yeah, maybe just research is the only thing. Like, you do a lot of uh, good work by like, engaging the public. Maybe like you mentioned, mm-hmm. maybe the research part you can expand with different uh, interests or stakeholders. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think the department of examination uh, because in within the department we have like this research division. Like everyone. Yes. Yes. Everyone, not just the National Museum, but every curator in the uh, the Department of Museum Malaysia also conduct their own research. Like yes. for example, like when before the uh, the 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 Lost Kingdom exhibition, because we also have like, this team of curator where they did the uh, research, right? So of course, we before you do the exhibition, you need to have a research, right? So maybe uh, maybe like like I said before, there are some parts of the aspects or stories that we need to engage and do a lot of research more so that we can mm. display and put in the narrative yeah. of the national yeah. reach out with more different people yeah mm-hmm. so we move on to our last question today it feels like mm. supposed to be one hour now it's one hour 40 minutes yeah <laughs> very good azam i learned so many things about the museum today i hope everyone yeah. in the public can appreciate azam and give him like emoji or a like that you feel this <laughs> to azam Thank you so much, Azam. So, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, um, you were having a Chiti exhibition, you're having a Madeka exhibition. Um, what are the future of museums in this country? What are your future plans? Any collaborations with international museums um, besides these two, or these two are the main ones? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, comments about future of museum, I think the best way is will be digitization. I think yes. the, I think that with the, the biggest challenge at the moment is to make the collection accessible to everyone, whereby at the moment, actually we have a database for our okay. our artifact collections, but I think, I mean, 
the best way at the first year of museum i was i am hoping that perhaps in the future and not in the future i mean very soon that we can make it access accessible to everyone whereby when if they want to do research or they want to do to search something about collection in the national museum yes. where they just can type in the website and so on right i mean uh mm -hmm. in, the, in the in the website we uh, we display some of the collections but i was hoping that maybe we have kind of like this extensive thorough uh database uh online database that everyone can have a look up to and right so and then uh, also yeah future museum expand the museum i hope someday mm -hmm. um after the end of the COVID, because right now all because of the money goes to the public health right so mm -hmm. hoping like in the future that maybe like uh government we can give a lot of uh, money to us so that we can i mean to the department of museum and we can expand so and put more uh collections well so yeah i think that would be it uh, and also collaboration i mean actually the department of museum malaysia have done a lot of collaborations actually with uh with the international museums like for okay. example uh the the lost kingdom exhibition yes. uh, was the main uh, the main uh collaboration that we did with the national museum of cambodia and national museum of indonesia and then That's before that we also have the golden man exhibition if i'm not sure whether you remember or not uh mm -hmm. in 2019 as well uh whereby we uh bring this kazakhstan uh, national museum uh artifacts and showcase yes. to everyone uh, the golden mm -hmm. man right and also um other than that uh currently uh we are i think the department of museum Malaysia is work closely with the national museum of china where we tend uh, where we are planning to give loans uh, some of our artifacts for their travel exhibition as well and i think uh i think the national museum uh, the department of museum Malaysia also uh, is a part of icom member i mean right so we also yeah. engage in the icom conference and also yes. icom uh seminar webinar and so on. like i also myself like uh, a plan, uh like i said we're going to do have a webinars about the international yes. museum day on july 14 july okay. or maybe uh where we have invited speakers from the singapore uh, indonesia and also uh, pakistan where we will discuss about how the museum impact with the covid so mm -hmm. yeah i think the collaboration is there so perhaps uh we it should be like ongoing uh, collaboration mm -hmm. as well so yeah i was hoping that that we could retain for that international museum mm -hmm. thank you thank you so much so now we will i think wrap up most of the questions but we will now move into our final section which is comments huh? So okay. maybe we can answer a few comments today. Dun, 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 dun. The first comment is by Misa Kolil. Okay. What's the most interesting artifact you have come across so far and why? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would your be friend? Because, yeah, 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 she's my friend. <laughs> I think uh, the most interesting artifact. Hmm. Uh, I think... Let me remember this. I think there's actually many interesting artifacts. Uh, God, there's actually a chair, a chair uh, that we have um, in our collection, whereby I think they put a body actually, like a body of, I think a, some kind of ritual a chair, whereby they will, be, they will put the body on top of that chair. So they still, uh, and then we still have this kind of mystic, Related like ghost uh, chair something like that. So I think that would be like my the interesting thing artifact. I think we give it uh, we loan this chair to the Trengganu State Museum because they have this kind of exhibition about funerary exhibition. So yeah, I think that would be like the most interesting artifact that I come across. Actually, there's a lot, but that one that is the one that I can think of right now. Hmm. What 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 is a ghost chair? What do you mean by having a body? How how like how like you... I'm not sure. I I don't remember the story of the chair actually. But I think like if I'm not mistaken, like when that when a person that when a person dies, uh, I'm not I'm not sure the chair belongs to which tribes or which um, group of people. But then they said that they will put the body on on that okay. chair until okay. that until they rot. I think <laughs> so. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah. So and then it's quite. Um, quite mystic and quite mysterious lah. so i think that's the most interesting fact yeah any ghost stories anyone see anyone on the chair uh uh ghost stories yes we have actually in the national museum but i don't want to tell that uh much more because i mean because i'm not really skeptical i mean this 
because all these artifacts um, used to be uh, used to used to belong to someone, somebody, right? So of course there are the ghost elements. I mean the ghost things happen to be within the artifacts. So yeah, um, there's there are stories uh, that I heard, and also I also some some ghosts that I think I saw <laughs> in the National Museum, but yeah. Hmm. Oh, you saw a ghost in the National Museum? Yeah. <laughs> ah, <yo. laughs> okay, okay. Very briefly, we're going to move to the next question, you know, because okay. a lot of questions, but then, yeah. how does the ghost look like? And what does the ghost look like? Uh, that one, I think there's like a woman where a telekong. Yeah, you know, okay. a telekong. Yeah, a telekong, yeah, okay. that is one time. But yeah, that's just one glimpse of that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I hope I never see a telekong ghost. <laughs> And then uh, the next question, how do you often, how often do museums work together with private museums and state museums for research and development by Anne Grace Avita? Okay, like for, for the private museum uh, so far, oh, I, mean, I think we used to collab collaborate, uh, collaborate uh, with the private museum. But for the state museum, uh, we always like um, work closely, especially during the International Museum Day. Uh, mm. program so because every every year we have this kind of uh, international museum day program right so at that time like we will work closely with um the all the state museum whereby like every state museum will conduct uh some of the programs uh that we organize during that day and also in terms of research um uh some of the research also we work closely together with uh with the state museum as well like for example i think uh a team from the malay world ethnology museum uh they are conducting a research about um about this uh oh god i forgot about this uh a jar yeah jar like a jar so at that time like we at that, that team uh they uh went to the trangano state museum because the trangano state museum have a lot of these uh collections of the jar so yeah, it's called Mataban, yeah, Mataban. So at that uh, so this is one of the many examples that uh, the Federal Museum work closely with the State Museum as well. Uh. Mm. So I think it be, it depends on the programs or the research project that we have uh, that we have every year. So yeah, sometimes uh, it can it is it uh, it doesn't much it, it's not much, but sometimes uh, during that year we have like lots of collaboration between all in between all um, stakeholders yeah. mm. okay so um i think you have thought about it before how difficult it is to get a museum curator job what are the yeah, special okay. qualities <laughs> okay so this is this would, this would be a really interesting question i would say <laughs> because uh first of all you need to see you always need to be alert with the vacancies that uh the public service division i mean uh, the public service commission or the spa uh advertise so uh it depends on the vacancies actually so and then if you actually if you go if you google like curator s41 spa i mean at that uh, in that page they they will already like mention what uh what kind of uh qualities or certification that that, that they uh, that one needs to become a curator so but then um in Malaysia, because we follow the SPA system, so basically you only need to have a uh, not you only need. I mean, you need you need to have a uh, a bachelor degrees in arts subjects, mostly okay. in history or in sociology or anthropology, and also some. Uh, if you have also a uh, uh, background in arts and design, also would be would be considered as well because uh, curators not just need to do a lot of history because some of the Creator also need to design, like to design the exhibitions on it. So some of the qualities uh, of this aspect also would be considered to become a curator. So actually, it depends on the vacancies of that when they open. So at that time, let's say when they, if they want to find a curator that have a arts and designs or visual art design, visual art background. So mostly they will like prioritize the candidates at that time. Yeah. So by then it's very very limited. <laughs> uh, positions like for example one in five years. yeah one in a five years and then let's say if they open the vacancies i think last time when they opened the vacancies it's only for 11 11 yeah. vacancies so you can imagine like thousands apply 
But towards the end, like you only need to compete for 11 uh, position, right? So like a bit like a Hunger Games, I would say. <laughs> but then it's not, but then you don't need to focus on, um, I mean, it's not just uh, like the federal curator, uh, curatorial position as well. I mean, you can apply like in the, for the private museum too. Yes. Like for yes. the, like the Islamic Arts Museum or the Bengal. Ilham. Uh, Ilham, yeah, but then it's like, more like to art gallery, right? So yeah. there, so there are other aspects uh, as well. And also the state yes. museum, like who one mentioned before, uh, you can apply, you can always search uh, their vacancies. And also Balai, uh, Balai Seni Negara as well. Uh, Balai, uh, they quite um, uh, interesting as well because they uh, they do the hiring by themselves because they ah. are by them, they are by them, by them, by them So so it's quite more flexible compared to us, uh, the one that at the National Museum and the Department of Museum because we are under the directly under the SPA. Mm. So the basic requirement is just a bachelor's degree in arts? Yeah, bachelor's degree. Uh, arts, Any experience uh, needed? Experience, yeah, that will be a bonus. I think it, it depends on on the interview as well. Uh. And, okay. and I was, if you have like for me, like, ah, uh, yeah, I think uh, for me, because I have a master's degrees uh, in the museum studies. Uh, so in, in terms of uh, remuneration as well, like, I would I, I get an extra like three hundred ringgit something yeah because I have a master's yeah I think that one also you can uh, find in the uh, in the SPA website like curator S Pablo Satu page yeah mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that Mr Azam so we have six or seven more questions I think some oh, of them are so many so, uh, your 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 ASEAN oh. Azila any scary story to share Mr Azam do you oh, scary story yeah, lucky scary story. And uh, maybe you already mentioned um the Telokong. So any others? Or maybe <laughs> her next question is do you do any collaboration with museums outside of Malaysia? So these two questions she asked. Yeah, I think uh the, the ghost story, I think in that one only. I think I don't one need only, to la. tell more Nanti kan, no one wants to come to the National Museum. <laughs> yeah, la. The yeah. Night. Museum, yeah, the night. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, I think if you want to know the stories about ghosts, uh in the National Museum, I think you can go to the ML Studios, you know, ML Studios page, video, yeah, Facebook page. I think there was one girl that they, they were telling stories about uh, her encounter with ghosts in the National Museum. I think that one is another story that you can look up to. I mean, like collaboration, just like I mentioned before, uh, we work, I mean, we have worked with the National Museum of Indonesia, National Museum of uh, Cambodia and also National Museum of China, National Museum of Japan also. So there's, there's actually there are a lot of uh, collaboration actually that happens uh, between uh, the Department of Museum Malaysia and also outside, um, in Museum outside Malaysia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so Alia Nuha Faika, um, could you elaborate further on the kind of research that you're working on? Maybe something related to your international conference coming up and yeah the alia first oh, yeah so so uh, so yeah the alia nuha fight <laughs> they also my yeah. friend uh also yeah that one uh, because the the i my proposal for the upcoming international material culture conference has just been accepted recently so that one i'm going to present a research paper about um uh, this called Kiswa Textiles uh, in the collections of the Department of Museum Malaysia. So that is what I'm currently working at. So, uh, I mean, next time, if you come to the National Museum, if you go to Gallery B or the Malay Kingdom Gallery, there is uh, this one called uh, Calligraphic Shirt or Baju Bur Ayat. So that one, actually, we display uh, in that gallery, we uh, tell the stories of the importance of the baju brai. Usually, uh, people when they see that, they just see that as a shirt that can protect uh, for the Muslim. Uh, for the Muslim, they that can protect them from uh, the devil's uh, stuff and everything, and also can make them uh, quite give an extra strength in terms of this paranormal uh, belief, a spiritual belief. But then, when I did the research, I found out that that shirt actually comes from the Kiswa textile. Actually, the Kiswa textile is the textile that covers uh, the Kaaba, Kaaba building in Makkah. So that oh, okay. is what, yeah. So I'm, I'm in. Uh, so in my paper uh, for the for this conference, I'm planning to tell the story how from a Kiswa textiles, yes, so from Kiswa textile, then uh, comes from Makkah to the Malay region, and how they evolve just from a textile to a shirt. 
so and how there is a uh, relationship between that and also the Malay Pequis Nation so on. So that one maybe you can look forward during the conference where I where I presented my paper. Yeah. Okay, we have to move a bit quicker. We're reaching the yeah, two yeah. hour mark. Huh? Do you yeah. have any? Oh, you mentioned that. So uh, this is by Siti Munira Kasim. Could you elaborate mm. more on the Lost Kingdom exhibition? It sounds very exis- uh, very interesting. Yeah. I think yeah. I think this. I think the most uh interesting part of the uh the Lost Kingdom exhibition where we display a lots of uh, Hindu Buddhist statues. Yeah, whereby actually where we before this we not really never done that, but it's uh we rarely do that. We did that. So I think that will be the interesting part. So to showcase like there there is a historical narrative or stories about the Hindu Buddhist um uh in our Malay uh, historical uh region, that will be like the most interesting part of the Lost Kingdom as well. Uh then in the Lost Kingdom exhibition for me. Yeah. Okay, our next question is by Yap Pui Yi. Is the Avalo a real artifact or a replica? What about um, the other one in the Perak Museum? The, the, the original one is the National Museum. At the, at the Perak or Taiping uh, Perak Museum is the replica. Okay, that's by Yap Pui Yi. Huh? Okay. And then the next question we have by Dennis Ong. Um, what do you think are the differences between replicas produced by the artisans? Artists versus genuine artifacts as museum displays. Hmm. Wow. So hard, lah. Question by Dennis. <laughs> uh, I think it's just in terms of um, as long it uh, as long as the replicas uh, gives the meaning of the original one. I mean, how do I say this? Uh, show like the originality. I think it it doesn't matter for me. Because of course, uh, as long as the message that the replica try to give to everyone, receive to the public, so I think it will be, it, it, it's okay. It doesn't matter for me whether it is made by the artisans or or the genuine museum artifact. Because when it comes to replicas, you have to think a lot of uh, you have to consider many things actually. Like for example, like the cost of doing that, and also like the expertise I see uh, to do the replicas. So there are not there are not many people in Malaysia that can do uh, replicas for the museum, uh, for the artifacts of the collection. So for me, as long as it looks like the original and is give like the same um and it shows or highlights the the same features like the original one, it should be okay for me. But that is my personal opinion, lah. Because mm. uh, I realize also a lot of um, there are quite a few replicas. Maybe the Perak Man is a replica. Yeah. Is it? Is the majority of the artifacts um, artifacts or are they replicas? Although I I understand hundred percent that it's good. Either way, some of the some of the uh some of the artifacts I think not majority only some some only some portions of the museum collections in uh, the national museum are replicas. Yeah, that most of the one are the most of the one that we display are originals. Yeah. Okay, so last question. I think it's just a yes or no, huh? Aisha. I I read that museum the girl stuff used to hear sound of ghosts of the bombing bum. Is that phenomenon? Have you heard of that? No, yes. I haven't heard. I haven't yeah. heard of the bomb. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this online. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe anything? What do you say? I think yeah, that's all for me. I think yeah, I think um, okay. Maybe my last message for to Malaysians yes. for watching this. I think uh, I hope uh, I, I think the main purpose of me of doing this, uh, agreeing to do this interview with me, I mean, I think the main purpose is just to showcase or make people understand about the museum industry in the Malaysia, how it works, how there are different types on how and how people can engage with the museum as well. So I was hoping that perhaps that doing this interview and giving explanation like almost two hours this uh, can make people more appreciate about his our history and also our museum more so and then perhaps uh, can also join our programs or activities that we showcase in our social media please do like and subscribe as well to our uh, like and follow in our social media and engage uh, and participate in our program so if anything you have a comment so you can also just leave the comments to our social media and also just can contact uh, me directly also can also because if you go to like to our page, we, we have uh, our email address that you can contact, right? So yeah, so basically that is my message. 
Thank you so much, Azam, for sharing all your wonderful details about the museum industry, about the role of a curator. I think people need to know, and also the National Museum and the future of the National Museum in Malaysia. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. I hope everyone today has enjoyed this conversation. I think it's so nice that people from the public can talk directly to a curator in a museum on a Saturday night uh, yeah. from 8.30 <laughs> until 10.30 at night. I think, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people watching appreciate this. Thank yeah. you for making the effort, Azam. I hope, yeah. hope your superiors see this also and then uh, validate your good work. Yeah, so thank I, you. Yeah, everyone, thank you for sharing. Thank, thanks for saying thank you as well. I think we appreciate your comments. Um, I hope to see everyone soon for our next session. Please like and subscribe to Azam Adnan. Please uh, like and subscribe to Dominic One Weekend Show. Please uh, like and subscribe to the Museum Nagara. I hope to see everyone soon. Have a good evening. Yeah, have a good everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.